Biologists classify animals into their kingdoms of life as part of their job. But they do a lot more than just that. Let me introduce you to a wildlife biologist and learn more about her work. It's captivating. Hi, my name is Sophie Gilbert and I'm a wildlife biologist and an assistant professor at the University of Idaho. So what we're doing today is we're doing some camera checks of research cameras that I have out on the experimental forest, which is pretty close to the University of Idaho campus. Some of my work is to better understand how uh, wildlife, especially large mammals, respond to environmental change, which is really important as our world is changing very quickly right now. We have cameras out across this forest to monitor our wildlife activity patterns and locations on the landscape, uh, and this will help us track change through time. You have to get the camera in the right spot. So most animals, we think of them as really big, but they're not as tall as us. So we usually put the cameras just about waist height for a person, which turns out to be kind of the middle of an animal's body which we want to make sure we get a nice clean shot of that animal's body. And uh, the reason we come check on the cameras is first to make sure that it hasn't been damaged, uh, but then also to uh, get the data off of the cameras, all the photos it's been taking. Gilbert removes the photo card from the camera and transfers the pictures onto her laptop. That way she can study the pictures more carefully. It's always really exciting arriving at a camera station and kind of opening it up and, and looking at the photos for the first time, uh, it, you never know what you're gonna get. So for me, it, it, feels like, um, it feels like unwrapping a present at Christmas every single time. I've done this so many times and I have never gotten sick of the thrill of opening it up and, and seeing what's inside of it. Maybe it's a deer fawn, maybe it's a bear, maybe it's a cougar, maybe it's a turkey doing something goofy in front of the camera, it's always fun. By studying the pictures, Gilbert gets a better idea of how many and what kind of animals are in this part of the forest. We really want to understand how many herbivores there are um, because they can damage the forest if there's too many. On the other hand, the carnivores can really help regulate those herbivores and maybe even benefit forestry uh, by preventing the herbivores from eating young trees. Gilbert works in forests in many places, including Alaska. There she filmed one of her research projects that looked at the health of deer fawns. And so there we're asking questions really about forest restoration. What can we do when logging's been gone for a long time, but the forest hasn't really recovered for the deer? So we're going in and doing restoration treatments and asking, does it work? So much of what I do is figuring out, okay, there, I have this question about how animals work or how they relate to their environment. How am I gonna measure it? Right? Animals don't want me to get close to them, so if I need to get really close to them, how am I going to get close enough to capture them and put a GPS collar on them? Or can I ask my question by not getting close to them and coming up with a clever way to measure them remotely, like with a camera trap? Gilbert and her students keep track of a number of cameras in this forest, and spending the day hiking around to check them is just part of the job. I wanted to become a biologist because I've always loved animals and being outside. And so in this career, I get, to, I get to both learn about animals, interact with animals, and spend a lot of time in their habitat. And so this job allows me to do both of those things in my day-to-day -day life. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website or check our related videos. And if you like Science Trek, be sure to click the subscribe button to catch our newest videos.